Welcome to the Gospel Road. We're going to look at Romans 8. It says, There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus for the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his only his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous required righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not dwell and does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. In the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, but if by the spirit... You put to death the deeds of the body you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, their heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs in Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who are the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Not Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray, for we for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, then who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up For us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. 
who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we will be killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8. That's what we are looking at today. And right at the beginning of that, it talks about, you know, no condemnation for those that are in Christ, for the law of the Spirit has set you free. Free in Christ Jesus for the law of sin and death. Now, as we kind of go through this, it also in some ways talks about focus. Where are you thinking? What are you doing? Where are you placing your mind? You know, in the flesh or in the Spirit? And that's one thing that we do need to think about every day as we're going through things. Where are we placing our mind? Where is our focus? You know, we can easily take this and make it very terminology when it comes to work on where is that focus? When you're at work, are you focused on work? Are you focused to be better at what you're doing every day? Are you focused on your family? Are you focused on making sure your family is doing the best that it can every day? Where is that focus? Are you kind of cut between that focus? Are you distracted to where you're not able to focus? Maybe you even procrastinate. You know, you know it's there, but you just wait and you're not getting it done. Yeah, these are things that we need to think about every day as we're going through life. If you're, you know, looking to be a little more spiritual with God and working on that, that's the the one side. But then there's the side of life that we also are looking at and dealing with every day as well, because there needs to be that focus on where we're going and making sure that we're doing things right in work, in personal lives. Again, it's professional and personal, and we're trying to get those to really come together so we can do the best and be the best that we can be. Now, is it easy? No, because again, we do get a lot of distractions that come to us every day, a lot of things that really kind of get in the way of getting things done. In fact, one of the things I've been saying a lot lately, because there's been so much going on with me with meetings and events and different stuff, isn't it crazy when work gets in the way of work? There's a lot of things that need to be done on the administrative side and things that I need to kind of get done. And I, I don't always get it done, probably in the timely manner that I should. In fact, this morning, talking with a professor friend of mine, teaches at one of, a couple of the schools here locally. And he was talking about, and he actually messed up. He, he put, because everything's submitted online now, and he accidentally messed up the deadline. So it was an hour before when it should have been. So all of a sudden, he's his email is blowing up this morning because students were not able to get their homework in because they waited to the very last minute. You know, not you know really working on their schedule and planning ahead so they can get things taken care of. Well, and again, that was a failure on his part. As we all fail, we're not perfect. Things happen, but he was able to go in and fix it. So then they're able to get their assignments uploaded. But here's the thing. When you're waiting to the last second, when you're pushing things off and you're not holding that focus on whatever it is, and I know especially being a full-time student, you have a lot of things that you're juggling between the different classes, between a work schedule, I mean, whatever it is. And we know friends because you want to spend time with your friends. But a lot of times, you end up pushing things off to the very last second. By pushing it off to the very last second, it could actually bite you. And then you're not prepared for it. Now, like this one, it bit his students because they weren't prepared that he was going to put the wrong time on there. Again, it happens. 
I know I mess up things like that all the time. But again, this is where our mind needs to be. That's where our focus needs to be. Because if they were to get that done at, at, in a timely fashion, they would have never ran into the issue. And now at the same time, if you're focusing and looking at different things, because again, I've messed stuff up many times that people have then brought it to my attention. Well, luckily, sometimes someone saw it and we were able to get it fixed rather quickly. Other times, nobody really was paying attention and I failed and I didn't until the very last second. And then I had to get it fixed quickly. Sometimes works, sometimes yeah, not so much. But where is it? Where are you putting that focus? What are you letting distract you when you're trying to get things done? What are you allowing to kind of get in your way in life that is creating problems as you're making your way through to work every day? We have to be aware of that. We have to know. Sometimes because of that, when you're waiting to the last second, now you feel like you're a failure. Now you feel like you can never get anything done. Well, you can. You're better than what you think you are. It's just, it's your mind, your priorities, and your focus. And we need to really focus on that every day. And I know, like I said, I, I deal with that on a daily basis, especially with the new job, because I'm doing so many different things, juggling so many different things that, yes, I get distracted from the focus. But then at the same time, I'm still keeping it in the back of my head, okay, I need to get this done. I need to get this done. So I'm trying to get all of that taken care of and then realize I know I need to get it done by a certain time. Like I've got a report that I need to get done this week. I know when it's due and I know when I can do it. And I'm trying to get it squeezed in between all of the meetings and events that I have this week. Will I get it done? I'll get it done. This seems to be the way that things go because part of the report are the meetings and the events that I have this week. But plan. It's all about planning. It's about organization. Organization and planning can help you with that focus. It can help you with your priorities. It can help you with your responsibilities. I'm being responsible. I know I'm trying to get a couple meetings set up, trying to actually get a, a, a podcast set up and our schedule is kind of getting in the way. And even like this past weekend, I had a public affairs show that I was on that aired over the weekend. It took me kind of a minute to kind of get that day figured out to get the interview done with them. But it's not, it's, it's really focusing and pushing forward to see what's going on. Now, at, at times, I'll end up going through an email and I got distracted and I forgot to do an email. And I, in fact, I answered one this morning that I didn't get to, but I did get it done. And then, I don't know, they're probably going to be upset because I didn't get it to them in a timely fashion. I kind of run into that many times right now, but I'm doing my best. And that's all we can do because sometimes being our best is doing the best that we can because things happen in life that kind of get in the way. Not that they're supposed to, but it's just the way life can be at times. And then it messes up our focus. It messes up how we are trying to get things done and taken care of. Many people, they understand that because that's the life that they, they're kind of in as well. So they get that. But not everybody are, is that forgiving. They're expecting things right now. I remember as a kid and they were always talking about the fast food that we're in. And so now we have the fast food mentality. And with that, it always said that we're expecting things quicker and faster and that's very true. And in fact, we went from that fast food mentality to now having phones, computers in our pocket. So we're wanting that stuff instantaneously. It's not even waiting in line like we did in fast food. So we kind of get anxious. We lose patience rather quickly. Where is it that you stand? How do you fall when it comes into that area? How do you hold your focus to get things done the way you need to be done, getting it done in a timely fashion, getting it done so you're really not waiting till that last second to get it put together and then get it uploaded in life, the cloud, whatever it is, turned in. How are you keeping that and moving forward? Because if you are, maybe you have a friend that they need help with that, a coworker that they need help with that as well, and you can help them. Maybe you've got someone that you know that can help you with it. Yeah, so many different ways. We got to try and figure that out. 
I mean, I have a friend of mine who's terrible with their schedule. They never seem to focus on that. And it's always a mess where they double book themselves. Yeah. Again, we get so busy. Things like that do happen. But how do we just stop for a second? Take a breath. Making sure that we are getting everything done the way that we should be getting it done. It's very important. This comes at that time. You know, are we spending our time wisely? Are we wasting other people's time because we're not spending our time wisely? So those things to think about as we're trying to be better and do better, right? Romans 8, that's what we looked at today. Read it. How does it help you? How can you read that and maybe even talk to someone you know to really kind of work through how is this really applying to where I am in my life on what I need to worry about and how I need to focus? Romans 8. Thank you for listening to The Gospel Road. If you enjoyed this, you can always share it on social media. I always appreciate that. And find me on pretty much uh, every platform out there at my buddy Jimmy. And even give a rating on the platform that you're listening. I appreciate that as well. And even find me at mybuddyjimmy.com. As I always keep saying, I've got so many things that I'm trying to get kind of off the ground again. And well, there goes the focus because there's only so much time in a day. And then even then, there's only so much availability, not just in time, but where I can go and do things to get things done. That makes it hard too. Yeah. Thank you for listening to The Gospel Road. Have a great day. God bless. Spinal adjustments provided by Dr. Chad Rolfson. The Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center is a Des Moines area low flat fee per month unlimited chiropractic care practice. When life happens, just adjust. Schedule today at SpinalTuning.com. If you're looking for help with software, app, web development, be sure to check out my friends at IngenuityCompany.com. They believe in their clients. Software development, app development, web development, visioning, design thinking, diagramming, organizational development, strategy, they can help you at the Ingenuity Company. Find out more at IngenuityCompany.com. The Jimmy Olsen Radio Network.